Hi, this is a video live seeing the Bitcoin price going uh, near thousand dollars. It is my pleasure to announce that a special guest of today's podcast is none other than Mark Demezel. I did not expect this to happen so soon. Mark is a self-taught investor with over 20 years of experience living adventurous lifestyle and making several legendary calls along the way. It was an explosion. Not only did he accurately predict the 2008 crash, he also recognized the potential of Bitcoin as early as 2012. I have also implemented Bitcoin in my permanent portfolio. His impactful calls include selling Bitcoin for $1,000 in 2013 or calling 20,000 Bitcoin top in 2017. It's really I think very important to sell the gig is up. But the biggest that I remember is predicting the crash and subsequent V-shaped recovery of COVID pandemic recession. This crash should not be compared with the 2008 crash, no. A very strong correction, but also very quickly it will bounce out of it. Ignore all the panic around you and all the dooms. He has been my inspiration ever since and I hope he can inspire you in the same way. Hello, Mark. Hi, um, Dave. How are you? I'm very well. I'm having a podcast of my life. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say uh, also thank you. Yeah, you've been an uh, avid follower of my channel, but uh, even more so, you've been sometimes very critical and I had very different opinions. And I think sometimes, uh, yeah, your style of communication was hard. Uh, because you're very confrontational at the time, but at the same time, you were also right sometimes uh, and very right when, when I was very wrong, especially in 2021. Eh? Uh, I was still bullish, uh, but you be, uh, became bearish and you also warned me of certain things like using leverage. Um, and uh, but you also predicted lower prices. Uh, and I, I went through your arguments, but I said, like. I think chances are low. I think we're still in a bull market. And so I remained long, uh, even with leverage. And <laughs> and you were very right. And I thank you for trying to warn me there. I should have listened that, uh, much more uh, to your uh, warning signs. I would have saved me lots of money. So I certainly will take your your uh, op uh, opinion uh, more into account in the, into the future. And I will certainly try to uh, communicate in a less confrontational, less aggressive way uh, on mm -hmm. the other hand, uh, I am uh, very critical and very picky about influencers because I think that the space is extremely inflated by them. Also, the subscriber count of lots of these people is very inflated. So uh, I am kind of on purpose. Um, I'm doing kind of like a, like a test sometimes when I talk to these people because their egos are inflated. But you, mm -hmm. I think it doesn't apply to you. And also, this is also why I uh, appreciate you and uh, I res my respect for you. You are not one of these quickly cooked analysts or investors because you've been in a space for 20 years, I think, at least. I started investing in 1999, uh, yeah. uh, but okay. I mean, really taking it serious and reading books about it in 2005 or so. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and, and starting to invest uh, full time. Uh, with the analysis that I received and stopped doing any other jobs was in 2009. And some of these guys, uh, they just straight just blocked me and then they got wrecked. And so I think that this also shows that how you handled, like you didn't kind of take an like insult of your ego or something like that. All of this, if, if you follow me, uh, this is also why, you know, I feel uh, quite a respect for you, you know, Mark. Thank you so much, Dave. And and the same uh, for me towards you. You also shared that you've also had many ups and downs, and 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 uh, I think yeah, you're still there uh, investing. And yeah, it's really I. It's many people they do something for five years or ten years, and then they move on to something else, and they never become really an expert in the field. And uh, uh, and it seems that you're really on the right track there to keep going. <laughs> And uh, and I applaud you very much for that. And um, and I would say that actually my ego did uh, impact me in 2021. Uh, I really got I humiliated a lot, uh, losing 90 percent. Uh, um, actually, a little bit more, even 94 percent or so of my net worth uh, in in one year. Uh, 
I mean, what else can happen with your ego? <laughs> it's totally destroyed. Uh, and so, but that's good. That's the good thing about uh, about being wrong. Eh? If you if you if you indeed um, uh, become much more uh, humble, uh, that's very good uh, uh, to be a successful investor. So um, it, it it looked like I really needed a, another great lesson and. And I'm happy I got that. Uh, we are going to do two podcasts, actually. They will be released separately. So this first would be about uh, my uh, presentation, that what I've prepared, something I believe uh, yields lots of value for all of us. And then the second podcast would be devoted to Curtis and his case and his presentation. So what we're looking at right now is current treasury yield curve. Okay. And uh, this is, I think, a very important to look at because what we can see that over the past three years that this year the yield curve inverted this is something that many many influencers by now talked about and uh, i don't know who's, who started it but the first guy i personally saw was like three months ago uh, a channel called interpret gains here is another chart connected to the yield inversion because as you can see this is the past 50 years almost okay 45 years or 50 years as you can see in these red circles that was when we have marked the the inversion we can derive from that that once the inversion happens there is very often like 80 plus percent times that some time after the inversion recession happens we have inverted this year in 2023 and I believe that we started a countdown to another recession. And the last time we inverted was 2019. And, you know, surprise, the next year we had a very short recession. However, 2020, you know, the Corona stuff. But it was and it's also listed as a recession, a recession nonetheless. This is another slide which shows roughly the timing that is measured how many months how many months until the recession once the inversion happened okay and as you can see in in 1980s it was like 17 months 9 months 19 months all things considered we could just say that like 18 months or so like the countdown to recession and another thing to to see by the way from this chart is that the recession then happens once the uh, the the yield curve is no longer inverted because it doesn't stay inverted for long. I think this is the, the most uh, the most recent uh, chart I've seen so far. So we are pretty inverted. We are pretty much below the zero, the zero line here. So we are pretty deeply inverted, but we are not yet climbing back up above the zero. I think it's not happening this year. Actually, I'm going to derive crypto from this. When the yield curve back, comes back out of uh, inverted uh -huh. uh, condition, how many months on average does it take before a recession starts? Once we become out of the inversion, it's pretty fast. I would say that before six months, it usually happens. Yeah, I think that's also interesting because, of course, a recession is always information that looks back. Eh? Like it's it's um, actually when it actually happens, these gray lines, people in the media don't really think yet it's a recession. It's only later when these gray lines are actually being uh, pulled, oh, pulled back and the okay. data comes in, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. And also, as Curtis has been saying often uh, on our uh, podcast, that the stocks tend to rally while we are still in a recession because the, the market speculation is front-running the actual results. So, yeah, that was a very good point, Mark. So, the crash might actually uh, appear before the actual recession start the crash could actually happen around the reversed inversion point so when we actually come back to the zero i think that's where the crash could actually potentially somewhere happen now i would like to show you uh, uh my crypto uh, my crypto conclusions that i have made so for the simplicity of the calls because i figured i learned that it's very important to keep your calls simple. I have started making a very simple uh, videos called FaceTime videos. And I even try to actually, uh, uh, to actually call correctly the little uh, uh, ups and downs as we go throughout the year. 
And this is the result of my series. I have put it on a timeline, guys. So as you can see here, these pictures, those are my videos, actually, from the, uh, from the FaceTime series, okay, on my channel. And I have made either green lines and correcting and, and showing to the spot where I made the video or red lines and red, red circle to, sh to show you where I made that video or this video. And when the line is green, I was bullish in the video. And when the line is red, then I was bearish in the video. And I'm, I started making this series in like 11th of November last year. And the first video I made was Crypto Screaming Buy. And I was well, obviously very bullish here. So that was a correct call. Then I made another video uh, like, um, uh, like, uh, like it's, it's right to stay all in. Or I think it's right to stay all in. And that was just before we actually climbed back from the 17k. And then actually I even managed to, to be bearish just before short corrections. I was bearish here, here, and uh, and then I was I was still bullish here because and it still continued going up. I started being bearish here, and then I was bullish after a small correction. I was even telling you here that Bitcoin will hit 200 or weekly. This red line is at 200 weekly. So, so here I was calling that it's going to come back to 200 weekly. It did come back. Then I, then I said that, okay, you know, bullish narrative next. And then it happened, the bullish narrative next. And uh, in this video, uh, I would like, I'm, I'm uh, showing you this, uh, uh, this series here on the timeline because I was the most bearish here uh, around 31K and I called below 10,000 Bitcoin. And I think that I overshot with the estimate, <laughs> to say at least. And I'm, I, I, will, I would like to talk to you why, and I would like to talk to you, so what I think my corrected estimate is going to be. As you can see, this is a screenshot taken from the Marks video. The video is titled, Why Bitcoin are Likely to Go Down? And this video is from 2019. Mark was saying, every cycle we have gone down to like, 30% versus trend line in the valuation only. Uh, this is like 2015. This is like two cycles ago. Yes, there was a retest of the bottom and we had a 30% versus trend line. And then happened Corona. And again, like 30% versus trend line during the Corona. This is the logarithmic regression today. I think that Mark, you are using the very same link because I have this link from you. Fair value, the trend line is 2.6 trillion. And right now we are just 1.1 trillion at the very moment. So as we spend time below the trend line, we pull the trend line down. But in that uh, meaning, we also change the history. Uh, the trend line in the past is also a little bit tiny, a little bit lower. And that's why the undervaluation in the past is then smaller because the whole trend line is pulled a little bit down. So the undervaluation is smaller. So you always, when you want to take these things accurately, you always have to calculate from the point of view of that particular year. So, and I have gone through the data and I can confirm that in 2012, from that perspective, if you calculated the trend line back there, there was like 20% versus trend line only huge undervaluation in 2015 there was like 30 percent versus trend line again huge undervaluation in the corona bottom when you calculated it there was also like 30 percent versus trend line huge undervaluation and we have not yet gone around to 30 percent versus trend line in this cycle but there is a small catch in 2021 there were uh, literally very very few people who who wouldn't believe who didn't believe that this will go higher than the undervaluation overvaluation will not go higher that the you know that because if you see it if you see this chart it literally shows that the overvaluation should actually end up somewhere here but it never got there it never got there and there were uh, and there were uh, like very few people who who call this in the past and I think that the crypto is less volatile today. And I think this is also how it also shows that we will not see such overvaluations ever again. And because of this lower volatility, I am going to deduct that we will also not see 30% versus trend line this cycle, 
but I think we can go somewhere, somewhere uh, like around 35% versus the trend line. This is the undervaluation today or valuation versus the trend line today. We are like 42% because this is minus 58. So we are 42% versus the trend line. So we are not yet uh, there. So, and I think that uh, during this cycle, we are going to go uh, around 35% versus the trend line. Uh, and I just explained you why. And I also don't think it's going to happen this year. I don't think so. I give you the reasons in the FaceTime video. The reasons are simply because there is not enough long leverage yet to, to flush people. Long leverage was kind of stopped over the past months, especially in August. Lots of long leverage was stopped. Influencers are bearish. They're calling 23K Bitcoin, 1200 Ethereum and stuff like that. And they're repeating that over. Uh, and people are shorting. I've seen over the past days, a little short leverage coming up. I don't think it's realistic that it's going to happen uh, this year. So I think it's more realistic. It's more probable it's going to happen next year. And the next year, the trend line, the fair value is going to be around 3 trillion. So all in all, if you, if you count 35% uh, from 3 trillion, it's somewhere around 1, 1 trillion. And that's actually where we were just a few days ago or a few weeks ago. So I think if history is an indication and if I am reading this correctly, my conclusion is that the crypto next year will actually not go that much below one trillion and a very one 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 last one last uh one last argument for this is that we've already retested the bottom guys because also people call for a retest of the bottom so 18.5k and we've already done that in march We've already, we've already retested the bottom this year, March. Bitcoin went below 20K and the, the, total cal, current, the total market cap went like 870 billion. But if I'm wrong, and if it indeed will drop to 30% versus the trend line, if I'm wrong here, and maybe even a little bit lower, so alternatively, it would be like 870 billion and that would be another retest of the bottom. So if I'm wrong, then yes, the retest of the bottom could happen. We never triple retested of the retested the bottom. We've always double tested the bottom, and that's why I don't think it would be reasonable to bet to bet on it as a as a majority chance. Yeah, I think it's great, uh, great presentation. I really like you 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 involved the logarithmic regression there. Um, so, uh, so do I understand correctly? You, you changed your mind that it would go back to 10k Bitcoin because of the logarithmic regression, or are there any other reasons? Also, the logarithmic regression. If we go below 10k, then like, oh my God, then guys, it's it's a it's a cataclysm, and the logarithmic regression, we would be 10% versus trend line. Then literally even less, we would be 8% versus trend line. And I think that's, that's a undervaluation from which we would not really recover. I think that, uh, based on, it would break all the patterns. Of course, it would break everything for that to happen. I think something like, like really cataclysmic will have to happen like major recession or, uh, NATO versus Russia headlines, you name it. You know, there are lots of doom callers, so we are all inspired. Okay, yeah, I think it's a great analysis. And um, yeah, uh, 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 I, I would fully agree there. It is a bottom for crypto, very likely. Uh, and 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 I think that, um, uh, um, yeah, picking the bottom uh, uh, is uh, an art that can yeah, get you, can get you, can make you very dirty, uh, as they say, as a dirty craft. Uh, and it's dangerous. Um, you can be shit on. So I think from that perspective, um, uh, and also like indeed, very good that you point out that like the fair value of cryptocurrency continues to go up over time. Eh? And so um, uh, therefore, even if you make a new low in uh, undervaluation versus the trend line, that doesn't mean in fiat value you yeah. make a new low. I think that's uh, very well pointed out. Uh, and therefore, 
uh, yeah, I think it's, that's quite bullish for crypto. Like you're buying something today that, uh, yeah, I mean, is, 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 is lowly priced and, and therefore it has a lot of safety actually. Um, but it's interesting that you also give a low probability that we do crash through the bottom and go a lot deeper. Uh, I find that interesting also to hear because, of course, it's always yeah, a small probability of, for these things to happen. What do you invest in? How does your crypto portfolio look like? So uh, for the first time in my life, I also bit, I am 30% in Bitcoin as well. I've never really owned Bitcoin before. Uh, the rest of my portfolio, uh, my largest position is in the small project called Luxo. And the market cap, how much is that for Luxo? Just, I think that estimate is what you, what you need. I don't think you need the exact, exact figure. And I think the estimate is, I think there is like 35 million lux out and the, the price is $5.1. And I think that it's around 150 million, the, the market cap mark. That's very interesting. Any other coins you're invested in none? Yes, um, so 30% Bitcoin, 40% Luxo. I have also invested in another from the list of my reviews and it's called Chromia. But I think this one is too early because Chromia is going to have probably the biggest release in their history. Ah, that's very interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 I thought before that like the, the, the war for which layer one network will win was over. Uh, and, and, and my conclusion at the time was that uh, Ethereum won it. And now, uh, uh, I, I mean, it's not so likely other layer one networks will, will be able to um, um, topple that. And, um, and it's just a matter of time before Ethereum becomes the biggest one. And, and thanks to its network effect, it will attract mo most of the uh, cryptocurrency uh, applications and will remain the biggest for for a, a decade to come. Um, however, uh, a recent development is that Ethereum has stopped scaling layer one. Uh, it, it, I heard from um, uh, Justin Bonds, uh, who's running a cryptocurrency fund in the Netherlands. He's, he talks about it regularly. Um, I don't know if that's accurate and correct, the analysis. But if that's true, then yeah, that's uh, it's indeed tr uh, the, the fees on the Ethereum network continue to be be high. Eh? Like how 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 why is that? Eh? And and if why is Ethereum not scaling faster so that the fees are low because it can be a lot lower? Eh? That's something I don't understand, and I'm curious to get your opinion on that also. Oh, uh, so my opinion is that. Uh, Ethereum is really doing all that it can to innovate and to solve this issue. Obviously, it has to solve this issue, otherwise it would lose its market share and its grasp on the DAP world and uh, to be the number one layer one network in the world. As long as it's innovating and as long as there is some realistic hope that the fees will drop, and beside of that, we have tons of layer two networks like Polygon, Arbitrum, I don't know what else, you name it, that, that took the, the fees very to down levels until, the, the, until Ethereum resolves it as well. So I agree with you that Ethereum is likely to be staying the largest layer one network for another time to come. Um, uh, however, I also think that the, the internet and the world is likely to be multi-chain and I think that the different use cases or different fields uh, might attract different layer ones as well. And for instance, Luxo is all about the fashion st uh, stuff and the NFTs and NFTs 2.0. Well, that's very interesting. And so um, uh, you seem to have a very good, uh, why, why don't you have exposure to Ethereum then? And why do you choose to have uh, exposure to BTC uh, instead? This is a good question, and this is the only the only reason why. Yes, I would put the 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 percentage probably into Ethereum now, but uh, it's because of the dominance chart that I've been reading for years now. It's a very slow chart. As far as the dominance, the Bitcoin dominance rises, the Ethereum versus Bitcoin goes down. Uh, that makes sense. But do you, can you show a longer term the Bitcoin dominance chart? Like, is there a clear pattern that? 
it's likely to why does is it likely to hit the 60 percent dominance again if you see this level this 58 percent dominance level which was a major level in the past bitcoin spent years and years in this level this is the the, the red level here and we dropped from that level in 2021 very suddenly and i just think it's gonna be retested back at least once if not twice in the previous cycles the bitcoin dominance also recovered somehow if you remember 2020 yeah and thank you so much david i think you did a wonderful job actually preparing all this and 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 thank you so much for the invitation and for your appreciation and uh, i really yeah, I, I love it and david nice to see you. you're looking good huh yeah my girlfriend my girlfriend always tells me that you are my clone you're my older clone because she always says that you take after me and I take after you and and I also can't can't deny that I feel connected and that your opinions are pretty close to mine quite often so I can't deny <laughs> oh my god guys guys guys, guys. say bye bye, bye, -bye.